What up y'all, Biko here. As a work from home soccer engineer that plays a lot of video games, my home setup is something I value a lot. I spend hours in front of my desk every single day. So it's important to me that I build a setup that not only boosts my productivity at work, but maximizes my gaming experience. In this video, I'll go over all the different parts of my setup, discussing the quality of these parts and letting you know if there are parts that I would recommend to you. Let's get right into it and talk about my favorite part of the setup, the monitors. If you've watched any of my previous videos, you might have caught a glimpse of my big ass primary monitor. This is the Samsung G9 Odyssey. It's a crazy monitor, and I'm not sure if it's something I can justify given the steep price tag when it came out, but I bought it used from Facebook Marketplace for around 700 bucks, which was quite a steal back then. I really like using this monitor for work because it gives me a ton of screen space without compromising the viewing angle. The curve feels great, and I'm able to look at the side edges of the screen quite comfortably. I'm also able to create all sorts of window layouts on the screen, depending on what I need to look at. As I'm sure you already know, it's amazing for gaming. I mean, it's what the monitor was built for. FPS games that support the ultra-ultra-wide aspect ratio feel super immersive by filling up your peripheral vision. League of Legends is pretty fun as well since it supports this aspect ratio, giving you a wider view of the map compared to a traditional gaming monitor. However, one genre of games that I feel like really takes advantage of the ultra ultra wide is racing games. This screen gives me an amazing view of the road and I'm also able to keep the track in my sights when my car is going sideways. If you couldn't already tell, I'm a huge fan of this monitor. From riding code to drifting cars, this monitor excels at all the activities I use it for. The MSRP is pretty high, but if you can grab it at a good discounted price, I'd say fucking send it. Now I also wanted to talk briefly about the monitor arm I use to hold up this big boy. This is the Ergotron HX with the heavy duty pivot mount. It is probably the most heavy duty monitor arm I've ever purchased. It is also by far the most expensive monitor arm I've purchased with a price tag of $399. Now there are many cheaper alternatives that aren't designed specifically for the G9 and will hold it up probably just fine. But the reason why I opted for such an expensive arm is because I move my monitor around a lot. I have to reposition every time I want to drive, so I want to make sure I'm buying an arm that is designed to hold the weight of the G9. So in conclusion, I wouldn't really recommend this arm unless you plan to move your G9 around frequently. Next, let's talk about my side monitor. This is the LG 27 inch Ultra Gear gaming monitor. Using a gaming monitor as a side monitor is pretty overkill, and the only reason I have a gaming monitor here is because that used to be my old primary monitor before I got the G9. Aside from that, having a side monitor is pretty useful. During work, I have my calendar open along with Spotify. While gaming, I pretty much only have Discord open on that screen. And yeah, those are the two monitors I use every single day. Next, let's talk about my sound setup. I'm definitely no expert when it comes to sound. My speaker setup is super simple, without any DACs or amps. I hook my Audio Engine A2 Plus desktop speakers directly to my computer via a USB cable. These desktop speakers sound pretty good and they provide a really crisp mid and highs, especially when you angle them upwards towards your ears. However, it does lack a little bit in bass, which is why I've attached the JMO Studio Series 808 subwoofer. This is a pretty ordinary subwoofer in terms of sound performance, but my favorite thing about it is the shape. It's much slimmer than your traditional subwoofer, allowing me to tuck it under my desk without impacting my legroom. This three speaker setup isn't anything crazy, but it does the trick for me. I think it sounds great in all use cases, from listening to music to playing games. I would recommend both the A2 Plus and the JMO Sub to people looking to build a sweet sounding and good looking setup. Moving forward, I'd like to introduce my desktop peripherals. For the keyboard, I'm currently using the Keychron Q1 QMK with Gateron Pro Red switches. The switches have been painstakingly hand looped and the stock keycaps have been replaced with um. I forget what keycaps they are, but my friend hooked me up with them, and they look pretty sick. Thanks, Jojo. And obviously, we can't introduce the keyboard without doing a quick sound test. For my 
my mouse, I'm using the Logitech G502 Lightspeed with the PowerPlay mat. And yeah, I'm the guy who uses an overpriced piece of plastic to support my palm. It feels great on my hand, but not for my wallet. I used the wired version of this mouse, the G502 Hero, for about four years before switching to the wireless version. And honestly, I think I just really like the shape of the mouse. It fits really nice in my palm, and I map the side buttons to different productivity shortcuts like switching between desktops. I've been using the Nexigo 1080p webcam for a couple of years now with no issues at all. I only use this webcam for Zoom calls, and I don't stream or anything, so this basic webcam does a trick for me. I'm pretty sure I just bought the most popular webcam at the time, so if you're looking for a webcam, I feel like you can't go wrong with any of the top sellers. For my microphone, I'm using the Audio-Technica AT2020 USB+. I also just realized that this mic is no longer selling for $150. It's actually listed for around $56 right now. It's been working great for the past couple of years, and it sounds way better than any of the other mics I've used. I believe a decent mic is a must if you're constantly in Zoom calls or talking to friends on Discord. My microphone is held up by the Elgato Wave Low Profile Mic Arm. Coming in at $100, it is not cheap for a mic arm. However, I really like it because I can position it right in my mouth and still be able to tuck it away completely. Another important peripheral on my desk is my Thunderbolt USB-C hub. I use this Thunderbolt hub because I move my MacBook around a lot. This makes it so much easier to plug in my MacBook because I only have one cable I need to work with. The hub itself is okay. I do have to do a power cycle every so often when it starts freezing up. But overall, it does its job and I'm happy with it. I really like to have a well-lit workstation. So I got this curved monitor bar to light up my table while I'm at work. This monitor light is nice because it is actually curved the same amount as my monitor, which makes it fit a lot better. My old monitor light wasn't curved, so the light would actually reflect off the monitor a lot more than with the new one. Now because I use my PC and my Mac interchangeably on the same setup, I have this USB switch that allows me to switch all my peripherals over from one computer to the other. I hook up my keyboard, mouse, webcam, speakers, and microphone, so that when I switch computers, all I have to do is press one single button. Now I don't know about y'all, but I run into a lot of power issues at all my apartments. Whether it's a power outage or a blown fuse, my power always seems to go out one way or another. To protect my PC from these outages, I have this Eaton UPS battery that my PC plugs into. Whenever I get an outage, the battery will supply power to my PC just long enough so that I can perform a graceful shutdown. It also lets me see how many watts my PC is currently pulling. It's pretty cool, it's also pretty extra, and it's done its job many times already. I wouldn't recommend it, but if you have a lot of power issues like me, then maybe it's a worthy investment to protect your PC. That's pretty much it for all the peripherals. Let's go ahead and move on to the table. For my table, I'm currently using the Uplift V2 standing desk. Coming in at one grand, it's a little bit pricey for a table, but I think you really get what you pay for. The table edges are lined with a hard plastic that protects the table from any collisions. My old table actually didn't have this, so I ended up chipping the edges whenever I pushed in my plastic chair. I have the white laminate tabletop, and it's been holding up quite well with no scratch marks at all. The two grommets in the back are honestly pretty ugly, and I wish I ordered a tabletop with no grommets. I actually ordered the commercial C-frame for this table because I like sitting nice and low, and the regular frame just wasn't low enough for me. The keypad for adjusting the table works great, and the table actually slows down right before it reaches the set height. The collision detection is super sensitive, so I'm never worried about accidentally yanking on a cable. It's actually so sensitive that once or twice a month, the table will detect a collision even though there isn't anything there. This isn't super annoying since it's not really frequent, and I'd rather have the table be extra careful than to accidentally crush something. To summarize, if you're looking for a premium standing desk, I'd highly recommend the Uplift V2. Now you might have heard my office chair in the background of some of my other videos. It's annoying as hell. I have the Herman Miller Aaron office chair with the tilting features. Now a new Aaron will cost you almost two grand, but you can buy a used one these days from almost anywhere. The design hasn't changed substantially in the past decade or so, and the build quality is amazing. So in my opinion, a 10 year old Aaron and a one year old Aaron won't feel too different as long as they're not broken. My Aaron was actually built in 2004, which means it's almost 20 years old and it still works great. The chair itself is really comfortable and fits my body really well. I've tried out a handful of ergonomic office chairs in the past and none of them really fit as well as the Aaron does. The mesh material is not scratchy at all and doesn't really sink in when you sit, making the chair feel firm yet supportive. The lumbar pillow feels well positioned and doesn't dig into my lower back. This is a chair I'd highly recommend, but at the end of the day, you need to find a chair that fits your body the best. And yeah, that's pretty much it for my setup. Hope you all enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time. Peace.